Mr. Carroll, everyone. Thank you for having me. Uh, welcome, everybody. So, let's talk about the presentation. Uh, last, last week, I was uh, reading the news, and I saw some articles that stand out and captivated my attention. Some of them were about legal regulations about robots and the inclusion of the automation in our jobs. And as David Alfred, the economist that did a head talk previously, I want to ask you the same question, which is how many of you think that automation will take away our jobs? Raise your hands. Okay, I see for a lot of optimism around here, which is nice. Actually, you are uh, thinking of the same way as me. Robots are not going to be the next terminator. Okay? Uh, for some of the jobs which are not related to automatic uh, works, there is a lot of probabilities that they will be replaced uh, for some, some robots, some automation. But um, as he says, there is a further paradox that you won't hear much about. Despite a century of creating machines to creating machines to do our job for us, the proportion of adults with that job has been consistently gone up in the last 125 years. Most of our jobs need different skills, but by including automation, we make some skills more valuable, more economically valuable, more important. For example, when the ATM came into the bank uh, field. A lot of debtors thought that they were going to get fired, but it happened that it happened that by adding ATMs, uh, it makes cheaper to create more branches. So these those debtors could focus more on their relation uh, with the customer. And there's another more ingredient, which is that we never have now. There will be always more jobs, more opportunities. I can go back to the past to tell people, hey, you will be in the future, you want to do this job as you will be yoga teacher, or you will be coacher, or whatever job that will ask normal right now. But trust me, it's the same is going to happen in the future. You will have another kind of job. You can go to opportunities of part in hardware, of course I have to talk about that. He says that the future is about gathering data from offline. Let's say, for example, you have a bridge and you want to know if you have to buy X or not. The point is that the bridge has to get the data uh, from the place you have the X, not gathering the data from the cloud and uh, taking the information of how often an uh, average family buys eggs every week, right? So he's basically talking about IoT, the internet of things, and he's pretty much right. In the last four years, it has been increasing exponentially. My point of view in this, this part is that most of the paid patents are based on new obligations for known materials. Going back then to the same example of the kitchen, uh, some years ago, we didn't expect to have silicon tools, right? And now it's something very common in our, our everyday use. So this is an ideal application for a long material of silicon. And I believe hardware could have the same kind of opportunities. Let me explain you one of our uh, open source projects from our RT uh, department. It's in the prototype stage. So let me put it in the who wants to be? Who wants to have superpowers? Okay. Yeah. Why not, right? Because I'm a gay. I want super pretty. But hey, remember that being uh, being gay now uh, is cool. Super fucking reader is a uh, reader that combines two plans and open source plans. One is that we know open power, open open source hardware. And the other is Spritz, which is an open source software for fast reading. How it works? It shows you the small screen, one hour, one, one word per time, with the red letter in the middle. Here, the words will flash through all the, all the time. 
you don't have to move your eyes, you have to focus on the left, left hand. And because you don't move your eyes, your brain is able to get the data faster. Your brain is faster than your eye. You want to try it? You want to do a test? No? Let me say yes. Next slide. <laughs> okay, so please focus on the red letter. Alright? Uh, 
your startup. I can't put them all here. But the point is that you can, you can share your projects in uh, structures or make magazine. You can build them with different tools. You can sell them in Etsy. You can, for example, you can have a place to build them as a hacker space. Should you get, for example, a hacker space in China? Yeah. You have a lot of tools to work for all of that. We have a place also to fund that, like start. So, yeah, I'm very, um, very optimistic for the kind of artwork. Uh, so, I think that we can create an even greater degree of community. So, that's one part. Thank you.